Hello everyone and welcome to another video of me working on this wonky old cottage that hasn't been treated particularly sympathetically by all the tradesmen, tradesmen that have come and worked in it over the last hundred or so years. So um, in the last video you saw that I basically did us some stud work and lined out this wall. And uh, what I've done since then, I have been asked back obviously, what I've done since then is I've actually uh, lined out this return uh, wall here. I've put some screws and timber into this uh, steel beam and packed that out. I just fixed a sort of two by two runner uh, into the brickwork. Again, have to be really careful on this brickwork because it's single skin. I don't know if you can just see through there into the room behind. So really, really careful on these kind of properties that you don't go berserk drilling because you can end up punching holes through into a bedroom or a room behind. Um, yeah, so fix that uh, sort of runner across the top there uh, and obviously fixed another sort of batten of two by two through the bottom here into these, these packers which I drilled. You can see, um, just caught some self-drilling screws into the web of that steel there. That's lined that out nice. Uh, sort of run a sort of carrier piece across here to fix that last one too because it's all a little bit dodgy in that corner so that's all that done uh, i don't know if you can just see there look this is just give you an idea of how i don't know that still beam went in and i haven't done a great job as i said we're going to sort of do some tidying up there but as you can see i've set my laser up and you can see it's just it's just above the two by two this end <laughs> when you get to this end look what's that like 75 mil down from it so that steel's only what eight foot long and it's three inches out of level. So <laughs> maybe someone didn't have a level when they did that. Um, uh, and also what I've done uh, is I've done this back wall. So I came in a day and didn't do any more filming because I wasn't sure how, um, I wasn't sure how the video would be received. And actually the video of me doing this was very well received. So if you watched it, thank you very much. I've got my light right there. If you watched it, thank you very much. So what we're going to do today is basically continue round. You can see this sort of, disaster zone up here what we're basically doing is we're not this is an internal wall no damping which is great but obviously not going to put a four by two skin on there because the room's sort of relatively narrow so what we're going to do here and i've been shopping this morning i've got some two by two this is all treated two by two and two by one batten what i'm going to do is batten these walls out and i'll run that batten all the way up till it sort of hits the roof line on the side of the rafters and then probably try and build some sort of framing behind it to, to add support. Obviously it's gonna be fixed to the wall, add a little bit of support, give something to put some insulation blanket into as well. And then what we've got to form here somehow, and there's, I've got some information, but not all the information. We've got basically a range cooker. I don't know if it's this one, but a similar range cooker to this one here. Uh, is gonna go, what, what the customer wants is me to build a pier coming off this pier, about 300 mil wide and 300 mil off the wall. Then there's gonna be a 900 mil gap. I actually think we're gonna put 75 mil either side. So um, what's that? A meter and 50 gap and then another another pier coming down. It's not going all the way to the floor. It's just gonna to go to worktop level so the units can run underneath it. So I'm gonna build those two piers there, obviously line out the back of it. I think I'm gonna build those two piers out and then uh, at probably about 2.4 meters, put like a soffit in or a, or a head detail, which would simulate the sort of standard ceiling height and then take that all the way up. So there's a little bit to think about. Obviously, again, you mustn't judge anyone on this plumbing. It was all sort of the guy that the, the family that's moved in here, they've done the best they can, they can in the short period they've done to try and in the short period they've been here to try and get the house all sort of working. So this is all sort of super temporary, all the plumbing, all the electrics all be sorted out eventually. But what I've got to do is try and build this sort of alcove, I suppose, these two piers around those pipes. I don't hit those, uh, which should be okay. Uh, but mm, the biggest sort of issue potentially is the fact that this, this support post here that goes up onto this purl in here does, will end up leaning through the wall so what i'm hoping is when i put that we've got 10 50 gap and then that pier i'm hoping it should just come within that post should come within that pier so we can lose it but anyway let's get some kit out and let's make a start and i'll as i start to fit these battens i'll talk you through what i'm doing and why i'm doing it i'm just going to quickly show you my sort of thought process on how i'm going to go about lining out this wall and um 
where we're going to start. So what we could do here, you know, this is an old property and we want to retain its character. However, you know, there's a kitchen going in here and there'll be, you know, worktops and bashbacks and upstands and stuff. So if this wall's all wonky, it's really just sort of transferring that wonkiness onto the finished job. So what I'm going to do here is try and straighten this wall through. And to do that, what I need to do is find out the sort of proudest point of the wall, because obviously we don't want to overpack it. I've got my level and I've run it into a few places. And basically what I found is, is just about here, there's a belly in the wall. So if I put my level up there, look, hold it plumb. You can see it's touching the wall there in the middle, look. And it sort of, it goes back in at the bottom and it goes back in at the top. So what I'm going to do is more or less where that bubble is there. That's pretty much the proudest point of the wall. So what I'm going to do is probably set my measurements out for this, these piers as we spoke about. And then I'll put my first baton on the outside of that. The fixings that I put in the centre will be the proudest point. Then what I'll do is pack it and plumb it so it's it's upright both sort of this way and this way, if that makes sense. It'll be, it'll be plumb obviously this way and we want to make sure it's plumb this way against the wall. Then what we can do is we can have a look at perhaps putting one on this end uh, making sure it's a sort of similar measurement and then we can perhaps get a line on or something. I know it's quite a lot of work but as I said I think it'll pay dividends later on down the line if we get this wall nice and straight. So let's get some batten cut and get one of those tacked up and again I've got a little process to do with some damp and I'll talk you through that when we come to fix it. Quick update I'll show you what I've done and, and uh, how I'm getting on. So put this centre batten on as we said that's sort of our reference batten that's the sort of furthest point into the room so that's now on it's all packed out so it's dead plumb both ways got some packers behind there uh, and i've taken opportunity there's a wooden beam here so basically i've just sort of cut some batten and use that so that's like free fixing really what i do just for good practice on old properties like this is i fix some dpc up the back of the batten not particularly worried about damp in terms of penetrative damp what we're aiming to do here is allow this to breathe so that if we did get any damp in here it doesn't get trapped because that's where the issues can be so what we're doing what i'm doing here is going to leave these buttons 50 mil up off the floor and obviously when we plaster we'll bear in mind this kitchen unit's going on the back here we'll leave that open free air space all the way up so not worried about that i won't be using uh, an avcl a vapor control layer or four back plasterboard here because my experience of these kind of old properties, you must let them breathe. So basically, if we just use normal 12.5 mil plasterboard on here, if you get any, and I, I'm gonna say inverted commas, damp in this wall, I would describe it as the kind of damp, um, if you were to get, if you were to get like a piece of cardboard or a bit of paper, when it's in a nice dry environment, it's nice and crisp. Um, when you put it in a sort of damper environment, you know, paper or cardboard, you can tell it's damp, it goes a bit soft. That's the maximum kind of damp you'd be talking about in here and of course my theory is and I've done lots of houses like this is that if there is any you know of that kind of damp in this wall here basically it will be sort of almost absorbed into the paper in the back of the plasterboard and basically drawn out into the room not in penetrative damp like I said it just it's just breathability so that's why we won't be using a foil back on here because I think then you stop the breathability of it so anyway that's enough on that and obviously i always welcome uh people's views on that in the comment section so uh what i've done uh moving on is i know that this is our sort of date and baton so what i've done is i've, I've marked out put a 50 mil mark on the floor here and actually followed they're fairly these original uh quarry tiles here are, are fairly parallel to the back wall so what i've done is I've taken a measurement, um, it actually works out from this joint here to that mark there is 150 mil, and that mark to here is exactly 50 millimeters. So I can just drop a bit of batten down. I've got a bit of batten here, look, you might not be able to see it, I'm running out of hands. So if you can just see, look, can you see that that bit of batten now, I drop that down the face of that, the batten I'm fixing to the wall, and the end of this batten runs with the line, I know that I'm nice and in line. I'm waffling a bit, I know. So what I've managed to do, using the same principle, I've set my batten up this end, pack that upright, as you can see, and it's quite a big pack on the bottom. And again, I've just put a piece of batten on there, put a bit of DPC behind it, and then as we've moved up, I've got a centre point, and then at the top look, it's quite tight. So just a couple of packers behind it there, and then this side again, uh, 
fairly tight at the bottom and then it gradually the wall falls out as we move further up and obviously put a piece of timber uh, batten between this uh, timber and the batten there so these are all nicely in the, in the same plane so what I've done now is set my line up as you can see here I've set a line up put a three mil packer behind it and that line we can then use that line uh, yeah, I set it across to here look and then it goes down the wall same at the bottom all the way along important that you put a packer behind it because if you don't um, each um, batten you put in could push the line as you can see here look we've got a nice three mil gap there so we know we're nice and straight on the floor so what i'll now do is prepare these other battens and literally just slowly move my way through packing out the batten so it's just three mil shy of that line plumbing them up uh, and doing the same at the top and then that should be a nice super nice straight flat wall so i hope i hope that all makes sense and it, as i said in the previous video on this kind of job it's fairly slow going but the effort that i put in now for this will pay dividends later on when you know people are tiling and fitting kitchens and stuff so anyway let's crack on making good progress now just a quick mention of the fixings i'm using actually um because obviously again potentially there could be damp in here so we don't really want any metal fixings going into that brickwork certainly not concrete screws or anything so what i tend to use is nothing spectacular just some sort of red plugs here so obviously that will go into the brickwork and then i'll just use um i've got five by 80s or five by 60s um obviously screwing into that and then technically no metal is as long as the screws are the right size technically no metal is hitting the brickwork so you won't have any issues there these gold screw i get from screw fix absolutely brilliant screw i might do a video on these um perfectly acceptable for any and a lot of the work that I do in sort of MDF and softwoods they do have their limits if you start working in hardwoods they're not really strong enough for that you can snap the heads but a really good quite a cheap all-round screw um, from screw fix there so yeah so I just thought I'd have a quick oh, I'm trip over just thought I'd quickly mention how I'm fixing that obviously I said I've got got this through the bottom of it I hope you can see that's <coughs> oh, excuse me it's just off that line uh, same as the top there look I'm um, just three mil off that line and when it comes to the center all i'm doing is uh putting my level uh, putting my level between i can't I've, I've run out of hands put my level between this stud which has been plumbed and this center stud that's been plumbed and then i just pack it in and out until it obviously um hits the um level it doesn't need to stand off because obviously the level is type on the buttons there so you can see this one here i'm looking at now i can't point it there's got no hands left i should just put packers out behind that until it touches the level and then um, drill and fix it. And obviously, uh, in terms of the amount of fixings, I'm not actually going mad, to be honest. They're about a metre apart. There's no need to sort of pepper this. Literally, that these battens are only taking half-inch plasterboard, so we don't need to go mad. So, yeah, brilliant. Uh, getting on really well now. What I've done here is that's all of those bits of batten in now up to the outside face of this first pier. So what I'm now going to do is batten the rest of this, the pier. I've marked where the pier is going to go here. I'll batten inside of that. We're only going to batten up to about, I don't know, because there's a, it's hard to explain, but basically, the, as I said, there's a pier that side, pier this side, and then a little bit higher than that cuckoo there, there's a, a sort of soffit or a, an extra sort of, going to build a sort of bulkhead to bring it out even wider, because these these pillars are only coming out 300, and obviously there's an integrated extractor goes in there, so that'll have to come up to about 450, so you'll see it as i do it um can't go too mad because i still want to give the customer a bit of flexibility if they change their mind but um, that's be later on hopefully I'll, I'll i'll show you that so i'll carry on just putting these bits of batten up to sort of where the where, where that bit of timber is uh i'd have to 
think about something else up there to catch. You can see we've got something we can start to um, fix our insulation to or whatever. I'll, I'll come to all that. I've got some tuber too, but yeah, we're getting on right. So there we go, that's that wall done. Uh, super lovely and straight as you can see. Look, it's just as I said earlier, just got that nice little three mil gap between the studs and the line all the way along there. And then we've got the same look all the way along the top. You see, so we know that's lovely and straight. That wall is now dead straight and dead plumb. So yeah, uh, it's taken quite a while. It's gone sort of midday, but there we go. Sony surely wins the race, wins the race I should say. Um, I'm going to work out what I'm going to do there in a bit, that'll come to me. So what we're going to do now is try and put some props or something across here, get a measurement for where these piers are coming, because obviously, the, as I don't know if I said already, these piers aren't going right down to the floor, they're going to come to worktop height. Floor's a bit of another issue. Um, obviously there was a quarry tile floor over this quarry tile floor. Um, there is damp coming through here, there's no two ways about it, and I think it's... It's basically probably just gone down on sort of an as raised or a hogging and concrete sort of um, bed there. So I think this is going to have to come up, but hopefully speaking to the customer, it's going to go back to this. I think they're probably going to have to put some sort of liquid screed or something in here and get a membrane down to keep the damp out. But basically the floor level is going to end up being more or less the same. So um, I know what my worktop height will end up at, so I'll bring those piers out above that, probably leave them an extra maybe 30 mil high. Um, and then when it's plasterboard, the plasterboard can come further down. And then when the kitchen, people come in to fit the kitchen, they can cut the plasterboard off to suit. So um, that gives a bit of flexibility. So yeah, start to work on these piers, as I said now, and hopefully I'm gonna get a sort of moment of clarity on this up here. <laughs> oh. Right, I think that's it for this video. Um, I've finished that wall now. I hope you found it interesting and if you have, uh, thank you for watching. Join me in the next video where I'll be working on this, uh, the alcove, basically that this cooker's going to sit in some piers and the customer wants an integrated uh, extractor, so we've got to work out what's going on there. So um, they don't 100% know exactly what want, but I'll mock some stuff up and they can have a look. So yeah, that's me done. Thanks for watching.